Woodward Knights is back. Welcome back, boys. In the nighttime. Yes, football. Football. Everyone, if you could do us a huge favor and hit that like, let's try to get to 50 before 930. That would really help us out a ton. We're going to dive into some more Lions, and I think at 930, we're going to just open it up to the NFL. Booner and I have some predictions to make before it gets too deep in the season. we got to let you know. We do, yeah. we got to let you know who we think is going to win MVP, we, Offensive Player of the Year, all that good jazz. We had that ready last week when we first opened the show and it <laughs> kind of started, but then it was... We started the show premiered on a Tuesday, and the Lions played Thursday. So we had to fit literally as much as like everyone. All the other shows had weeks and weeks and weeks leading up to the Lions predictions for the NFL, everything. And we had two days to fit everything in, squeeze it all in, and we we did it. But we just have some more predictions and stuff that we didn't touch. It's true. So. It's true. So Booner. All this hype, we've been so positive for, for all six episodes. We haven't said a ton of negative stuff. If you were to, to, to nitpick a little bit, if you were to look at the Kansas City Chiefs game or anything you've you've seen this offseason, is there any part of this area, any part of this team where you would give some criticism it's, to? It, it, I mean, it's, it, it's actually tough. It, yeah. it puts us in a weird spot because we want to be able to kind of criticize and you know push and, push and shove a little bit. The only thing I could really take out of that game, and I think everyone agrees with me, and a lot of people, Lions fans, can probably say the same thing, is last year your offense was a top five offense in the NFL. You expected that, and I do get that you, you went up and played against Kansas City Chiefs on the road, defending champs. Spags is the uh, defensive coordinator, the best defense coordinator in the NFL. But your offense only put up 14 points last week. You're supposed to be a top five offense in the NFL, and you only put up 14 points, and I get situationals yes i get it and you still won the game but if we really had to break something down and you had to criticize one thing it's or nitpicking if we're, yeah if we're being honest the offense was rusty ben johnson's play calling a little bit rusty yeah and i think that everyone every d and, and it's something that we haven't really talked about and no one's really talked about mm -hmm. but it's true like ben johnson said it today he came out in the press conference and he said it himself he was like, I, I was. He didn't say word for word. I was rushing, but you know, he, he kind said, of, "I need to be better." Yes, he was. I need to be better in different situations. We need to figure out, and we need to, we need to kind of come together on a couple things, and we need to bring together little little details to kind of button up this offense. Because when you really get into this, like this game here at home, we think it might be a good, great, easy win, but if it comes down to it, like you still have to execute. And as teams start getting more into the the year and the season. Other teams are going to start executing more and more and more. And if you don't button that stuff up and you only put up 14 points and you rely on your defense, you're you're not going to go win 10. You're, you're going to struggle. You're going to sit there versus the Packers, and you're only going to be one game ahead with a couple weeks to go. That's a great point, Booner. And, and the fact that Ben Johnson talked about that today just doubles down on it. He, he, said, him, he said so himself that he needs to be better. And, and he can, he's definitely nitpicking himself also. He says uh, that a lot of his play calls were a little wordy. It took a little long to get them into the huddle. Some of the offensive substitutions were a little late. They took a little long. It just didn't flow as well. Two, two quick comments here. First one, um, Andrew Jones. They didn't play in any preseason games shaking off the rust. Yeah, that could be it too. That's very true. They played in joint practices. Maybe it's because he, they, they didn't get reps in real game action. Yeah. So that could easily Relax. be it. Relax. No, no, I mean, that's a fair, it's not like but a off-the-wall statement. But we talk that, about like snaps that like players are actually taking serious. They're taking, yeah, but like they're, communication, different things like that. If you, if, I mean, you could do that at a joint practice. It's not loud. But when you're playing on the road, it's... It, Changes things. I mean, I guess, but I just it, really there's think definitely even rushed if week they one. played in preseason game, like the Chiefs played in preseason game, the Eagles played in preseason. I, game. I get like that, but rushed. it's just week one where you got to go four quarters. It's different. It, it, I mean, no, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I do. There was another comment here too, though, that I wanted to about Riley Patterson. Oh no, uh, Josu Gonzalez or Jose Jose. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but he said. That's what happens when people get film. That's what's going to start happening in the next few weeks. Is teams are going to start getting film. You're, Lucas. You play D two football. Like when you have film, you you're locked in on that. Especially this is a full new team, a different offense than that top five one last year. Teams are going to start locking in these these great coaches. You're going to go up against. They're going to. I hope they watch the film so they can see that offensive line just absolutely dominate. Oh, the, the offensive line. I'm no one better critique them. If one person in this room. I'm going to go flannel and Sam, is, and I'm going to kick you off the show, and I'm going to walk off the set if you critique that offensive line. And the thing is, like, and Dan Campbell even kind of spoke out a little bit, that, like, the Lions didn't give anything away in week one. Like, they played very, like, to themselves football. They just controlled the type of possession to keep Patrick Mahomes off the field. They stayed ahead of the chains as much as they could. But Dan Campbell even said there's going to be more explosive play calls. They're going to try to get 
more aggressive in the play calling this this week. You know why? Because Patrick Mahomes is on the field and you can take more chances. So this is when I really think we're going to see this Lions offense open up. I don't think they were designed to open up week one against Kansas City. So this is where I think the Lions can exploit a lot of areas because I think Ben Johnson has got a couple plays in his back pocket. I mean, we saw a little bit of Amon Ra lined up at fullback, but we've seen that before. That was that, that, wild. That's happened before. Like when they played Seattle when Amon Ra was a rookie, he was lined up as a running back. So it's not things that... Seattle hasn't seen before, but I think they're going to show a couple things that they haven't for sure. And to be just slightly optimistic about the comment you made about the offense only having 14, they were very close to scoring 28 points when when you think of Jameer Gibbs slipping on that one outside yeah, run. I think that was going to be a touchdown. But they did score right after that. Yeah, though. Marvin Jones fumble. Oh, they scored that same drive? Yeah, they, they did. All right, they canceled that. Score. Maybe 21. a third touchdown. So you do have a good point. Um, but it, it just felt like like a last year, I don't know what they averaged per game, what, 23, 24 or something like that. I could pull it up here real quick. But it just feels like that's something you have to – and Ben Johnson literally came out today and, and he yeah. stated that. Uh, he, he said it himself that he needs to be better. They need to button up the ends there and they need to figure it out going forward. And, right? and I think he's going to use Jameer Gibbs more this game. And he talked about that in the press conference today. Jalen, do you think you could run the clip about Ben Johnson talking about Jameer Gibbs and his usage mm-hmm. coming up? We always have plays tagged for him going into the game, but we feel really strongly about David as well. So that whole combination, that one-two punch, is is really good for us. Um, we had them both on the field at the same time a little bit last week. Uh, we'll probably continue to do that over over the course of the season, and uh, you know we'll see where where Gibbs best suits us each week. A well-spoken guy. <laughs> Shout out Ben Johnson. Uh, yeah, you, can see, <laughs> you can see how he can communicate to his players. And we, we saw it on the sidelines during training camp. Just his way to make complicated things sound easy. Yeah. I think that's part of his 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 his, his aura. Aura. That's aura. a good word. Aura. His aura. aura. Part of what's going to make him a good head coach one day. Another guy who might be a head coach one day usually shows a little more fire out on that field. It's Aaron Glenn. It's the defensive coordinator. And he talked about he – didn't, he didn't mention the word embarrassed, but he talked about what the Seahawks did to them last year and maybe what, what he's thinking about coming into this season. Jalen, could you play that clip? And Yes. I mean, I hear you guys talking about how they have a bad taste in their mouth. Well, hell, I got one in my mouth too. You know, we gave up 50 points, like damn near twice. So – um, our guys will be ready to play. They'll be ready to play. I, I want to run through a wall right now. Boone I, I want. I'm looking around right now. I'm looking for the helmet. I wanted to throw the helmet on and just do some some circle because I, I I really don't care about anything else. But the fact that Aaron Glenn went up there today and was oh we've got that in the back of our head because you know what I do is I, I, Booner I was in, does I was in Ford Field last does, year Booner does I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll pad up and go out there and play I remember that loss we didn't punt once no they didn't punt once but they didn't punt once <laughs> there you go buddy come on I know Aaron Glenn and, and you know that, that they put up 40 and he couldn't his defense didn't force one punt that man's fired up and he's fired me up I want to find that helmet I want to a little bit <laughs> Gave myself a concussion. <laughs> You're going to join Tyler Lockett in the concussion protocol. <laughs> Jalen. Yeah, ta- yeah, never mind. Do you have a bad taste? In- <laughs> <laughs> do you have a bad taste in your mouth from last season too? Uh, the Carolina game, I think that was like the worst game probably because we won that game, which we should have won. I think what was it Hubbard? Is that his name? Chuba. Chuba. Yeah, Chuba Hubbard was just you know looking like I don't know Derrick Henry. Anybody, De- Deontay Foreman, like he was there too. They had a dual back set, and it was just like we couldn't stop it. So for me, that was kind of you know a bad taste because we won that game. We're in the playoffs, you know what I mean? Yeah, very similar game. We couldn't stop the Panthers. You know, like, couldn't stop the Seahawks. I, mean, I don't think it's like a big issue now. I think it'd be better. But like my issue, like overall, was just the offense. Like last week, kind of sort of like you guys said, we could have beat them by two touchdowns. I mean, like Should've. not to be like biased, but they couldn't stop us. We just couldn't execute right. You know, a couple of miscues and whatnot, but. I think the offense will pick up once the season opens up. It's week one. Like, you can't be too hard on it because you're experimenting. And, like, as a, like by week six or so, maybe sure, but, like, not week one. So, I think we'll be fine. I think on Sunday we go two touchdowns. I think we want two touchdowns. Let's 31-17. go. 
it's kind of the perfect game for us to really see. We're, we're testing the lines. We get to see what they are. Are they for real? Which we all think they do. But but we get a, a Seattle team that had a bad week one. But we a lot of us believe they, they might be better than that. Actually, I believe they might be better than that. I think I was the only one. But it's going to be a good test. And I'm really excited to see Brian Branch again out there and the difference he can make on defense. Aaron Glenn, the last, cl- the last clip we're going to show for you is, is Aaron Glenn talking about Brian Branch. And the question was asked to him. How do you, and I'm paraphrasing here, um, how do you make sure that Brian Branch continues to elevate his game after his pick six against Patrick Mahomes? How can that that moment, that pick six, not be the highlight of his season, the highlight of his career? And this is what Aaron Glenn had to say. Have you talked to that player? You have? That should tell you everything about him. That should tell you everything. I don't think that's a worry. Well, I know it's not a worry. This guy's come from a great program and he's made a lot of plays on the biggest stage that he could be in. He made a pick six, man. He's on to the next. Hell yeah. I'm, Hell again, yeah. first of all, I love Aaron Glenn. <laughs> I watched that press conference today. I, was, I love this guy. This defense is odd. Oh, oh. But what did we talk about earlier this week with, with Brian Branch? What did we say? That interview that we played earlier this week of him, how just – professional he is how he's just all about business he doesn't care about his accomplishments he probably didn't even care he got a pick six i bet you he went back to the the sideline there and was like i want another one i don't care let's win this game that's the thing when you watch the interview with brian branch earlier this week he's he's a pro he's a pro's pro he shows up and he wants to win games he doesn't care about anything else accomplishments nothing just like aaron glenn said there he, he told the reporter have you talked to him yet have you have you had an interview with him yet Yep. All right. You know, because his persona, the vibe he gives off, he he's one of the, it seems like he's one of the nicest dudes and he is just a good dude. And all he wants to do is help the team. That is a Dan Campbell, Brad Holmes guy. And what Aaron Glenn just said there proved exactly what we talked about earlier this week. Very humble, too. Yes. And that's what you want in these. Like you want to build your team with guys like that.